Good morning or good afternoon, everyone, from wherever you're connecting from to this second section of the GIS Week 2020. My name is Abel, and I'm really excited to be hosting today's event. The topic of today's event is African Joe Porter. It promises to be informative, educative, and interactive. If you joined us for Monday's session, you will agree with me that we had an exciting time. Today promises to be even better from pressure packed presentations to resourceful demonstrations, awards, and wait for it, something new from Sambo's Joe Special. I'll rather not I'll keep that in the wraps until that time. So please stay tuned. I would like to take you through a few housekeeping rules. You are free to drop your questions in the Q&A on the screen. Questions will be presented to speakers under that column, while additional resource materials will be dropped for you under the chat section of your screen. Depending on our time, we will take live questions. All you need to do during the open forum session, simply raise your hand under the raise your hand button feature on the screen. We will begin today's webinar with the topic, African Joe Porter with presentations from Esri as well as Demo. To present these, we have very resourceful persons, persons who are passionate in having, in helping to grow GIs in Africa. The persons of Gassan, Shibli, and Poli Okoyo. Gassan is Esri's business development manager for West Africa and first speaking African countries where he supports the regional team in driving to special adoption, business growth, and technology innovation. Gassan also manages Esri's relationship with African, continental, and regional organization. Why Poli is Esri's senior solution engineer within the African regional team, helping to shape strategies on the effective adoption and use of location intelligence across the continent. She has over 10 years experience of supporting organizations across multi, multiple industries, improve how they address geospatial challenges they face by guiding the effective adoption of geospatial technologies. She holds an MSc in GIS, a bachelor's degree in geography, and she is a certified project manager practitioner. Polly is, Pauline is supporting African geoportal activities through technical assistance and capacity building support on the use of the data and technology, particularly the community engagement. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage Gassan, Gassan, you have our undivided attention. Thank you. Thank you for this great introduction, Abel. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes, we yes. can. Perfect. Thank you. Can I share my screen to show some slides, please? I think now you can um, uh, you can see in case you don't please let me know um, i just don't have too many screens in front of me to to see what's going on on the chat but thank you thank you abel for for, for your great introduction and and thank you sambos for organizing uh, this this great event uh, uh so good morning everyone uh, my name is gassan uh, shivli and uh, uh, i am uh, 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 responsible for our uh, operations in west africa as well as with all the regional african organizations uh, so I'm, I'm i'm very proud to be here today and, uh, and and thank you again i'm very proud to present also the esri strategy to support the african development uh, goals uh, for esri but also uh, how uh, how we're using our technologies and solution to help supporting 
uh, uh, the African Development Goals. Uh, it is important that as we look uh, today, uh, we're, we're in the middle uh, of the fourth industri industrial revolution where uh, AI, IoTs, uh, augmented reality, advanced analytics are all integrated with geospatial technology and they are changing the way we live and work. Um, so uh, as we uh, uh, we are deeply uh, committed uh, to, to support Africa and we see that Africa uh, has to be ready uh, for all the ICT uh, revolutions, uh, I want to say, but also has, the Africa has to be ready for geospatial infrastructure. Uh, so not only in terms of technology, but as well as uh, uh, it's important for sk uh, skills. Uh, uh, so you need the, the right skills to get the maximum out of this uh, ongoing uh, industrial revolution. Uh, so let's put some figure uh, uh, here. So Africa is the second largest continent. Most of the world's largest economies can fit inside Africa's footprint. We can see US, China, India, Europe. Africa is also the second most populated continent with 1.2 billion people of which 50% are under the age of 25. Uh, projections says that in 2050, one in four of the world's population will be sub-Saharan African, one in four. So 25% of the world population will be sub-Saharan Africans. We're seeing a boom in mega cities and it's becoming the norm in Africa. Mega cities like Lagos, uh, like Nairobi, like Cairo, like Johannesburg, uh, uh, Khartoum, all these mega cities are booming. Population are, 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 are getting there and, and the population is growing, the economies are growing, and uh, 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 we have to be ready for this, uh, uh, for, for this uh, tremendous and, and, and really great growth that Africa is expecting in the next uh, uh, few decades. So Africa is having a rapid growth in internet penetration. Uh, those are some figures where 20% increase of internet users, usage per year. Uh, the internet penetration is at 40% today, just behind the average, and it is growing. By 2025, 600 million people will have mob mobile uh, internet. And uh, the African leaders all across the continents uh, have come together and have acknowledged the importance of ICTs on economic growth, on social progress across the, across the continent. ICT uh, and GIS uh, are transforming businesses and governments in Africa. They are driving entrepreneurship and innovation. This is a quote from uh, our president and founder, Jack uh, Dangerman. Uh, Jack says that, and, 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 and this is part of our DNA, what we are, this is part of what we are committed. And, 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 and to be straight, this is also part of why I, I joined ESRI and why I was hired. Uh, uh, Jack said that we are deeply committed to supporting innovations in Africa helping users discover, explore, and understand the vast information available to them through the power of maps. And as we, we are following on that and we are uh, committed uh, to Africa. So the Africa Geoportal is, the, is an initiative that as we started and we picked Africa as the first continental Africa Geoportal. Uh, we are now building uh, Caribbean and then every continent will have its own geoportal. Uh, let's talk about the key opportunities here in Africa. There are 50 plus countries over, as we mentioned earlier, 1.2 billion people uh, growing and becoming uh, uh, the next uh, what we call economic growth center uh, with over 2.2 trillion in GDP, over a thousand languages. Uh, 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 growing uh, over 20% of internet usage per year. And the tech innovation is a norm. Today, ICT-driven industries are becoming the norm in Africa, and African leaders are working to integrate 
uh, those uh, 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 to, to integrate and to facilitate to promote ICT driven industries. However, they all come with challenges. And the challenges are the rapid growing populations, uh, are, uh, uh, the increased rates of urbanizations. And uh, uh, this will come also with resource shortage, resource not only in terms of, of natural resources, of funding, of, uh, uh, of, of physical resources, but also in terms of skills uh, shortage. Uh, wide scale poverty, though things are, are getting in a better, we're seeing the reductions of, of the poverty rates uh, in, in Africa, we're seeing a growing middle class uh, 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 categories, which, which is great. Sadly, widespread corruptions across the, co the continent and uh, uh, lack of access to efficient uh, health and educations. Those are uh, some key challenges that as we, uh, we would like to work with you and to, uh, to try to, uh, to improve. And that's where uh, to, to answer, to address. And that's where the Africa Geo Portal comes, comes in to help answer some of these challenges. So the vision of the Africa Geo Portal, it's, uh, it's to provide a one-stop shop portal for geographic content and comprehensive web GIS tool free for single users residing, supporting efforts and working in Africa. Uh, it's free, we will discuss it, but it is also a one-stop shop. What we have realized is, is, is there's a lot of data available in the continent, but they are all widespread and uh, challenging sometimes to identify where are these data, uh, how to get them. And this is where the Africa Geopoto becomes a sort of a one-shop one place to go and to collect this data, but not only only to collect this data, but also to conduct your uh, geospatial analysis. So the Africa Geo portals will help remove the barriers to entry to geospatial technology, to data and learning for users working in or on Africa. Uh, I will discuss it in the next uh, few slides. Uh, it will also enable a sustainable portal for portal, a portal of portals for existing and new geospatial data focused on Africa. It will provide a platform to promote premium data solutions and value add services to our users across the continent. So single use, why a single use? The idea of having the Africa Geo Portal is simply to create a collaborative environment. It's to encourage a collaborative environment that avails sharing of data, apps, information to everyone, anywhere, and at any time. So it is not for a private uh, organization workspace. It is not for only Sambos, as an example, to work within the Sambos environment. Uh, but it is for, 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 for members of the Sambos community, for, for Sambos staff, for any government agency staff to have an account and to share it with the broader community with the broader African community. Uh, uh, the single use will also help to increase transparencies and increase collaboration and, and, and sharing. It is for working together for Africa. Uh, I, I will not stay here long because uh, my colleague Pauline will show you the platform and we will go through it. But the Africa Geoportals has some key capabilities and offerings. The first, which is for us the most important, is by offering for free a single access to an ArcGIS online account, it will give access to the geo, to, to geospatial tools. So uh, uh, anyone working in or on, on Africa will have access to the best geospatial tools to make maps, to do analysis, and to create applications. It has also, uh, you, you will also have access to a wide source of, of learning resources, online training, e-learnings, uh, resources that will help you to develop your skills and, 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 and from, from, from beginners to more advanced, depending on, 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 on your needs and on your desire. Those learning resources are accessible and you can also use the geospatial tool, the ArcGIS online to do your, uh, uh, to, 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 to do your training. Uh, 
the Africa Geo Portal is also uh, well, uh, uh, the capability is it, it to bring together authoritative collection of African geospatial data through the Africa Living Atlas. By this, uh, uh, we work with various governments and various international organizations where we are bringing together all their data, uh, their public, publicly available data, so, uh, 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 so users can benefit from a one place and use authoritative uh, government, uh, uh, authoritative, sorry, uh, data uh, across the continent. Um, it is also, uh, there is also user success stories. So stories uh, shared by the African GeoPortal users intended to encourage and inspire others. Uh, they will be hopefully more uh, uh, story maps, uh, sort of, uh, 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 we're working with some partners, for example, to increase stories on the African integration across the continent. So we're going to promote stories that, 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 that shows how with the use of, of data geospatial, how, how with the use of GIS, uh, we can in, encourage more integrations and, uh, and African integrations and, and collaboration across. There's also a marketplace. Uh, 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 it will enable users to find proper solutions uh, from ESRI, uh, some of our partners, but also uh, other users. Some of it will be for free and some of it will be for revenues. And the revenues are not for ESRI, they are the revenues that, for example, other partners uh, are, uh, are requesting for some specific data. For example, if you want some more advanced satellite imagery, uh, as an example. Also, you will have a community uh, sort of news and blog uh, for us to share our, our experience, to discuss and, and, and to share our sort of news, content and events. So I I, I, I will not delve into the details because my colleague uh, Pauline uh, will, will show you and I think it's better to show you the platforms and for you to spend some time on Q&A. But technically uh, you have uh, 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 under each of these categories that I mentioned earlier, you have a short videos that you can go through it and it will describe uh, what, what you will find in those sections. But the tools and content, you will have access to the Africa Living Atlas as a content. You will have access to all open data sources, to community data, but also to commercial data. Uh, at the same time, you will have access to the Africa, uh, to the ArcGIS online, which is uh, uh, the best available GIS tool uh, that will help you conduct your mapping, analytics, and sharing and collaboration. Uh, on, on that, uh, uh, the organizations. I, I would like to take a, a few minutes here to discuss uh, 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 something that we have uh, divided, we have created within the Africa Geo Portal. It, it's it's more uh, uh, where organizations, companies uh, will be able to share, consume the Africa Geo Portal content in a way that creates a transparent environment where everybody can leverage the collaborative inf information. So the way it will, it will, it will help us to achieve uh, a, a sort of better and faster decision making. It will help organization to better collect data and uh, also to stimulate innovations and growth. Uh, and growth. Uh, it will reduce the loss of know-how uh, uh, and it will uh, uh, encourage the, uh, 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 the sharing, the collaborations of data. Now, we have within the Africa Geo Portal as as uh, as a portal of portal, uh, we have uh, we have developed sub uh, 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 I want to say country pages, and those country pages is every country uh, uh, will bring together some uh, um, uh, public institutions also with the support of the private sector to create, for example, uh, a country page uh, where you have, for example, Kenya.AfricaGeoPortal.com, Senegal.AfricaGeoPortal.com. So it will be for people working in Senegal and, and, and they want to uh, develop more uh, uh, data related to Senegal. They want to uh, use more uh, Senegalese oriented data, Senegalese oriented uh, environment. They can use the country page of the Senegal uh, 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 to work on it. it. They can then delve down to, uh, uh, to cities, to districts. Uh, uh, they can work with uh, authoritative data from the Senegalese uh, uh, authorities. Uh, uh, Laura, my, my colleague Pauline will show you some of these uh, uh, country pages. 
In addition to the country pages, we have worked together with organizations like the, uh, the, the World Bank, uh, like RCRMD, uh, where we would like to develop organization pages. So those organizations that are producing data, but that are also sharing data, will be able to share their data on the Africa Geo Portal. So you, 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 you get to an environment where if, if you want to do some uh, geospatial analysis, if you want to do some, uh, some work on, on the region, you will have a platform where you can go to each country uh, 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 authoritative data, but also you will have access to all the uh, regional organizations authoritative data in one place where you can contact, download the data, do your work. And if you want to do it and keep it for you, you have this ability, but if you want to do it and share it with the community, you will be able to share it with the uh, Africa Geo Portal. The key here is to increase transparency. So the Africa Geo Portal will bring benefits to development partners, such as a common platform to track data created by projects and, and, and programs. It will lead to efficiency, better use of data and better use of funds. And it will have the, uh, it will, it will uh, 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 once the data are created, it can be used many times, but it will also reduce the data uh, silos. Uh, finally, and I will stop after this slide, the Africa Geo Portal is, a, is sustainable. It's going to stay here, and this is a commitment from S3. We will keep this platform running as long as it needed to be. We will support project data to, uh, for it to continue to be accessible. Uh, the Africa Geo Portal is going to stay as the portal of portal, referencing or hosting geospatial data, regardless of sources, and it will promote <clears throat> the Africa uh, as we will continue to promote the Africa Geo Portal and gain contribution from other ESRI initiatives, such as the land statistics and health. The Africa Geo Portal is here. It's free for every single use, uh, uh, and there are no uh, 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 conditions. Uh, you can sign in, and, 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 and you can just close your account with no conditions. But hopefully, after the demo from my colleague Pauline, you will be able to sign in and, and to gain uh, uh, you will be able to sign in and, 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 and to support the communities, but at the same time to increase your use of, of GIS across the continent. I will stop here. Uh, uh, thank you again, everyone. And uh, Pauline, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Gassan. And happy GS Day to everyone. Thank you for giving us the opportunity uh, to celebrate this GIS Day with you. So after Gassan's um, great introduction and summary about Africa Geoportal, I'll just do a quick walkthrough on what we have on the Geoportal, how you can sign up and how you can take advantage of the data tools and learning resources we have um, available within the Geoportal. So for you to be able to access it, you can just um, easily search for Africa Geoportal uh, using whichever search engine you're familiar with or just uh, type uh, AfricaGeoportal.com. From there, you'll just come to our landing page here, where we are just giving you access to a number of resources that are based on our technology, but that can easily integrate with different other kinds of technology and data sources out there. So from there, you can see that you've linked um, the Geoportal to some uh, other existing portals that have content. Uh, I believe many of you are familiar with uh, most of the content we have available on COVID hubs, uh, which have been set up by different agencies and different countries, just uh, showing the situation of COVID-19 in the different countries and regions and so on. We've also linked this job portal to um, the Locust Hub by FAO, where we have seen that for much of this year, uh, also just starting from last year, there are a number of um, incidents uh, being recorded of uh, the, the, the crisis on the desert locust and so on. So you're just able to also navigate and access this and so on. Um, as you scroll on the job portal, you'll also be able to see some of the countries that we have specific sites for, where we have worked together with the key agencies responsible for data in some of these countries to be able to just set up um, uh, country pages or country sites that are specific to the data for that particular country. So an example being Cote d'Ivoire, where we were able to work with the different agencies within the country. And um, we do have the particular portal, which we can see it's in French. 
uh, but the good thing with our geoportals is that you're actually able to translate this um, into a language that you may be familiar with, it can be English or any other language that you're comfortable with. And from there, you're able to see that the geoportal has been set up by um, a number of agencies in the country, and we have the data sets that are available there. So from the geoportal, you're able to access this data, you're able to just view the item details and start interacting with it. And uh, we're giving you multiple opportunities to just sign up and join in. And also we have highlighted some of the content that we have from people within the continent, uh, some of our users. And again, as I mentioned, we have resources that you can take advantage of for learning, which are available with the Esri Academy, where you can access freely available courses there just to give you steps on how you can progress in terms of visualizing data and sharing this data with different kinds of people, as well as just how to enable collaboration and also access to our broader content that is uh, Africa Living Atlas. So for you to be able to just join Africa Geoportal, uh, you can sign up. When you click on sign up, you just uh, put in your standard credentials for signing up. That's your name, uh, email, and so on. And after that, you'll be able just to get um, you'll get an email notification that you've joined the job portal, but you're also able to use your social media accounts to be able to do this. So once you log in, uh, you are able to access uh, some of the information that I'll get to, but beyond that also, from the job portal, you're able to explore some of the data that we have. So within Africa job portal, we have a number of data sets and within the other country pages or country sites, we have a number of data sets available. So you're able to easily filter this information uh, just to view information by the kind of content you're interested in, how the data has been shared, which is either within Africa Geoportal or to the public, the date that the information was published and many other tags that we have available over there. So you can easily just search that data, uh, fil sorry, apply the filters and explore the data you have, then uh, proceed to actually use this data for whichever activities you'd like to do. So if you come to the tools, as I said, we have a multiple of a multi, we have multiple tools available within Africa Geoportal that you can take advantage of. And one of them I'll just uh, get into is our map viewer that you can use uh, to visualize your data, to do a bit of analysis on your data, and finally share your data or share your information as a web map that can be uh, used by other people in an interactive way. So the first thing within our um, Within our map view, are definitely you are able to access different kinds of things. You can get the gallery. Uh, you can look at some of the groups that you may be interested in. In case you've not joined any groups, there are a number of groups that you can join based on different communities or different activities and so on. You can view your content or the content uh, that has been made available within the organization and by the public and also just other organization information. Here on the top right, you're also able to see your profile information. So I'll just quickly get to that where I can see my settings. And from there, uh, once you get into Africa Geoportal, uh, you're able to just edit your profile. Uh, you're able to view the licenses that have been given to you automatically that have been granted to you. So you can see that you can have apps that you can use uh, in offline mode in the field. So you can actually create applications using your data that can be used in the fields that people can be able to add or make edits to in the field. We have essential apps that are within ArcGIS, which you can also access from the top section over here. And we have um, some of the office bundle apps and so on. And for those who are interested in development, we have different ways that you can actually take advantage of what we have to build your own applications or to further extend the applications you have uh, within Africa Geoportal. So from this point, again, just back to the map viewer, I can be able to just add data. So I can browse data that's within the uh, Living Atlas, that is authoritative content that we have, uh, that have been contributed by a number of people, a number of credible organizations and so on. So for example, if I was just interested in looking at what are the regional boundaries uh, or the boundaries of regions in Ghana, uh, I can be able just to put in that information and search for it over there. Uh, from there, I see that I have results all published by Esri, and uh, I can just explore this information just to have a look at it. So I am just able to click on that particular name and I'm able to just confirm that this data has been marked as authoritative, that is verified information. Um, it's within the Living Atlas and it's just available for people who have accounts. 
And from there, I can just read the description. And from the description, I can see that it has some population information um, for the different regions. And also just credits on who provided this data. You can see it's from, also from the Ghana Statistical Services. And uh, we also have a guidance on how this information can be used under the terms of use. So if um, this is something that I consider to be credible data, something that I can use, uh, again, you can also apply this same method methodology in trying to assess if data is credible for use and so on. You can just look at the description of the data, look at the source who has been credited, and definitely look at the terms of use just to know uh, how much a leeway you have in terms of using and interacting with the data. So once I get that information on display on my map, um, on my map viewer, definitely I can interact with it. I can click on it just to get the pop-up information. But also if I come to the attribute table, I'll just be able to visualize this information for all the records, which you can see is for all the 10 regions in Ghana. So another way I could add this information still I can search for layers that other people have published within ArcGIS Online, but definitely I can also add within my organization and so on. So if I look at the data that people have published within uh, Africa Geoportal, um, I can just search for this information. For example, if I just want to get uh, the health facilities within Ghana, I can just search based on that. And, sorry, let me just try to switch this. So from within uh, Access Online, also I'll be able to get this information. And um, I can filter this information uh, based on a number of parameters, such as the item type, uh, based on what I'm interested in, the date that the data was uploaded or modified, and so on. I can also just try to sort this by the date this information was modified. And I can see like one of the top or most recent other data sets is something that has been published by an individual. So I can further just explore what this person has been able to publish. Um, in this case, the user name is Selassie Stats Ghana, and I can see for this particular user, uh, uh, the person has also contributed significantly to the COVID hub that we have for Ghana. So I would ideally deem this source as a credible source for trying to visualize this information. So I can also just add the information to my map, and from there, um, uh, I easily just visualize this uh, within the map viewer. So again, I can interact with the data just to explore it a bit and see uh, what's within the data and so on. So for example, this specific map as it is, it can be used to start the conversation on where are the different facilities within Ghana and so on. And uh, just further to that, if I'm trying to get the information or, or the conversation to be more relevant to upcoming things, like for example, we have the um, we, we recently got the news that uh, a vaccine may be on the way for use uh, for COVID-19. And perhaps I'd like to just engage people to see like, if we get the vaccines into the country, into Ghana, how do we prioritize the, the dissemination or the distribution of the vaccine so that we make sure that the most vulnerable people have access to this vaccine as soon as possible. So one way we could do that um, definitely is we could use some of the analysis tools we have within um, the map viewer. So as I said, the map viewer, you can use it to visualize your data. You can use it to do a bit of analysis just to bring out what is underlying in your data and finally just share this information to other people who can interact with it dynamically. So with that, um, as a person who's interested in starting this conversation and engaging with people on this, uh, I may have a spreadsheet that just has information on uh, the different regions we have in Ghana, what's the access to medical practitioner ratio. That is, um, that I will actually at this point say that I've seen Ghana actually has the best kind of ratio compared to many other countries we have seen in Africa, whereby we are looking at access to different kinds of medical practitioners. So these are um, certified nurses, these are doctors, medical officers, pharmacists, and so on. And you can see the different ratios for the different countries and also the risk ratio. So the risk ratio is just the result of a number of factors, looking at the different uh, population dynamics, such as the health of people by region. So we have people who have respiratory diseases, we have people who have um, asthma and other kinds of conditions and so on. So the ratio is just a culmination of all those factors being put together for us to be able to determine uh, this distribution across the different regions and so on. So for me to my data to 
try to enrich this analysis, um, I'll just use my CSV, which uh, I've been able to explore, and I can easily drag and drop my CSV uh, inside my map. So the good thing with Africa GeoPortal, the map viewer we have, it can uh, accept various kinds of data in different formats and so on. And for the CSV, it's as simple as drag and drop. And already you can see that my um, map viewer has been able to just quickly go through the table and seeing that I may not have coordinates, but I actually have addresses of places that can be used to visualize this information. So in that case, I'm just going to use the Africa Geocoder, but we also have the broader global geocoder. And for that, I'll just scroll to my particular country, which in this case, it's Ghana. And um, once I select Ghana, you can see that for the region, because that's where my actual location information is, I'll just switch it to region and I'll try to display this information. So you can see once that information has landed again automatically through smart mapping that we have within the map viewer, it's trying to display this information, just give me options for displaying this information. So I can actually try to apply different ways or drawing styles for the displaying of this information. So with that, I'll just click on done just to be able to and check my health facilities and just look at the risk ratio uh, based on that. So you can see for each particular region, I can see my region, I can see that for access to a particular health practitioner, that is we have one medical practitioner that is available to a population of, that is serving about 200 um, people within this particular state and so on. And it keeps on running, whereby you can see for the region of Ashanti, it's actually a higher ratio where one practitioner is serving a larger population compared to the other regions and so on. So for me to actually visualize this information by the particular um, region, I can just do a bit of basic analysis, which I'm sure for those who are familiar with JS, this is something you're used to, uh, whereby I'll just try to link the data from my CSV to my region boundaries and then try to visualize this information looking at two factors. So the two factors are the population, uh, being served by practitioners as well as the population at risk by region. So I just do the analysis um, whereby I can use any of the tools that are available. So you, uh, you'll find that the good thing we have within our platform, within Africa Geoportal, is that you have the tools, but you're also giving you just guides on how that particular tool functions and so on. And when it comes to actually running the tool, we also give you a lot of information just to help you put in that information. So sorry, just to fill in the parameters and so on. So for me to be able to join my CSV data to my boundaries data that I found on Africa Geoportal, I'll just choose my target, which is the boundaries. Then I'll use my risk ratio layer. And from there, I just want to use a field that I'm using to join this information. So in this case, I'll just use the name of the particular region. And um, after that, I'll just give it the name, uh, vaccine priority. And please note, this is to start a conversation, ideally, so not um, something that we would really want to use to, to make some decisions to some point. And once I'm putting that information, I can just look at how many credits are being consumed. So by credits, we mean that every time you're able to do some activities within Africa Geoportal, such as analysis, uh, geocoding, and other uh, uh, activities that consume the the bandwidth that we've given you within Africa Geocontrol, you may have credits that are being consumed. So credits are just like your currency that you can use within Africa Geocontrol to do a number of activities. When it comes to displaying information, you may not need to use credits, but when it comes to analysis, you have a bit of consumption of credits. So with that, I'll just run my analysis whereby I'm joining my data that was within my risk ratio CSV uh, table and just add it to my region boundary so that I'm able to display this information based on the region boundaries. So the analysis can take a bit of time, which is a few seconds uh, for that to actually happen. But normally, if you're looking at, if you have more points that you're trying to, to involve in your analysis and so on, it may take just a few extra seconds beyond that. So once that is done, my layer will display shortly and we'll be able to see this information just being appended over there. So I can just see that for my vaccine priority layer, 
uh, all this data has been put together where I can see my practitioner ratio and risk ratio has been added. So how do I visualize this information? Well, I can use the smart mapping tool again, just to visualize this information. And the first attribute I'd like to look at is the practitioner ratio, which you can see automatically the data will be displayed on that. And then I can add another uh, parameter for visualizing my information. So I'll just use the risk ratio. And you can see through smart mapping, you're already getting hints on how to display this information. And you can, I can explore the different methods that are being applied there. But one of the ones I'd like to do is a relationship, um, relationship drawing style, whereby I want to see, or I want to just start the conversation and guide people to the conversation, whereby if we look at the two parameters, looking at people's access to a medical practitioner and the, the risk, the medical risks or the level of risk um, that people are facing within the region, then how do we decide that which region should actually have the vaccine being uh, rolled out or being distributed first? So you can see that already being um, um, displayed there, whereby just uh, automatically you can see from the key here that where there's high risk and high ratio, uh, such as this particular region, that's the Western region, then you expect that, or you, you would hope that the government will actually choose this particular place to be the first uh, location where uh, the vaccine will actually be rolled out. Still, there's a lot of flexibility in visualizing this information. I can just change a few things like the grid size instead of having multiple grids. Um, I can reduce that. I can choose my method. Again, we have just a brief explanation on that. And I can also just um, play around again with the visibility range, with the transparency, and so on. So once that is done, I can just click on done. And from this point, uh, I can remove the layers maybe I may not need uh, within the map, which I'll just do that. And again, for the Ghana Health Facilities, just to provide context to other people, for them to just uh, get an understanding of um, find there are uh, there's this ratio and so on, but maybe where are the particular medical facilities within this particular um, region and so on, just to provide context for that discussion. I can just have that layer there. I can set my visibility range so that it's only visible at a particular scale, uh, whereby once someone zooms in completely, that's when they're able to see this information. I can just change the, the sorry, the transparency for this uh, just a bit. And also, I can change the base map just to make the map a bit more palatable, uh, just to make it easier for people to focus on that particular, on a specific um, information that we are trying to draw people at, people's attention to. So once that is done, I have the ability to actually save this particular map and have it shared with different people. So please note, I'll just use content that we have that has been shared by different people. Um, and uh, uh, content that is available from the Africa Atlas, uh, courtesy of Esri's curated content. And also, uh, I've been able to add my own data. So Africa Geopolitics just gives you that flexibility to use data from different sources to be able to do different activities and so on. So from this point, uh, you'll see that for to save my map, I need to give it an, a suitable title. Uh, maybe I'll just add Ghana. Uh, to put in tags to make it easier for other people to search for this data and just a summary as a guidance to someone who may want to use this particular map. So once I save the map, um, I can also share this map and this means that I'll give further access to the, of the map and what is being displayed here to other people. So I have the flexibility of sharing it to the public or with the public with African Geoportal, that is for other users within the Geoportal or, or maybe at a specific community I may have within um, the geoportal. So this community could be maybe people that are in the same kind of uh, sector you're interested in, like maybe health in Ghana or just global health and so on. So I have those, uh, the ability to just uh, decide how this data, how I'd like for this data to be visualized and so on. And for any other data that I've actually added, the sharing is also updated to just reflect what is there. So we may not have missing layers within the map and so on. And once that is done, um, I'll be able to just, um, let me just copy that, I'll just be able to save my particular map and have it available to other people. Still within save, I'm able to embed it within our website, which gives flexibility in terms of how people can access and interact with this data. And further to that, I can build a web app. So we have multiple 
configurable templates that you can use to build your web app and just have it again the the consumption of this particular web map to just make it easier for people to interact with it so one of the examples is we have like a basic viewer where you have the flexibility to just preview how this information is going to look like on this particular web app so the web app just adds the window dress into your particular map it helps to give some some widgets that people can use to interact with the map or interact with the data within the map and so on. And for you to actually configure, you can change some settings like how many widgets you'd like to have here, the kind of theme you'd like to apply, other functionalities or capabilities you'd like to apply, and so on. So with that, um, I'd just like to hand it back to Gasan and I just encourage all of you to sign up to Africa Geo Portal. There are a number of resources that you can take advantage of. We have um, access to different kinds of data from people. We hope that you put in your communities there. Um, and also uh, another thing for the developers, we also have notebooks that you can take advantage, that you can automate some activities through scripting as well as just uh, leverage what you already have in terms of the content and tools. Thank you and back to Kassan. Th thank you, Pauline. Oh, Pauline, please, can I ask you to go to the main Africa uh, Geoportal page, please? and uh, there's some questions related to the uh, uh, reli reliabilities of the data. So uh, as you can see on the main page, by the way, when you sign in up on the tree, you have the data, the tools, and the learn. Those are the three key sections of the Africa Job Portal. So you have the data, access to the uh, large, vast uh, library of data that Africa Job Portal has. Uh, if you don't mind, Pauline, clicking on the data. And if you don't mind showing how the data set can be, uh, uh, how, how are we marking them as authoritative or, or, or uh, 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 if, if, you can, if you can show it to the colleagues. So for example, when you click on the data, Um, so I'll just try to explore the data we may have here. So I'm just, I can use this, what we have for our free cities. And um, just as Gasan, you've mentioned, what we are using to mark the data as authoritative uh, depends on a lot of things. It depends on the source, who has provided the data. It depends on the description or the 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 descriptive de details people have provided to the data, that is um, things like a, a lengthy proper description of the data, summaries, terms of use, which is very important just to give a guideline to people on how they are using the information, um, tags, which make it easier for people to just interact with the data or just to be able to search the data and so on, um, as well as credits, that is who is the source of the data and so on. So there are a number of information that we actually use um, in, in the, in, in the, on the bit of curating the data to make sure that we can mark it as authoritative. So this is a collective or collaborative activity that we have by us who are in Africa Geoportal as well as the entire uh, content curator group that we have within S3. So it involves a lot of just um, looking into the data, just verifying that the data is authoritative and so on. But you may also have individuals who have provided the data within Africa Geoportal who may, um, who, who may not be really representing an organization, but they have their own data, which is also considered authoritative. And uh, I would strongly, strongly encourage that you use the same way just to look at the description, look at the terms of use, look at who, at who has been credited on the data and so on, just as a guideline for you to actually determine for yourself if the data that has been provided would be adequate for the use that you'd like to, to make of the data and so on. Yeah. This is great, Pauline. Thank you. So if, if you look at the Africa Geoportal main page, you have the data, the tools, which is the Africa, uh, the ArcGIS online, the one that Pauline was just demonstrated, but all demonstrating, but you also have the learn, which is all access to all the learning materials. Uh, if, if you want, Pauline, please uh, just to click on the learn. Uh, uh, so there you'll have the full panoply of online resources. Uh, you can go, you can have, you can start your first training. You can have a learning path. Uh, you can have. You can schedule your own programs, and and uh, a lot of this uh, 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 trainings are free. 
and you just start your online training. So even if you don't have a GIS background or you, you, you're not, uh, uh, you don't have GIS skills, you can start your skills and develop it uh, you know, using uh, our e-learning uh, platform. So I will stop here. Uh, Abel, back to you. Sorry, sorry to have interjected, uh, interjected at the end, but Abel, back to you, please. That was a brilliant presentation. Thank you very much, Gerson and Pauline, for your well-researched and informative presentation. No doubt, the audience enjoyed it. Now, it's now time for question and answer. I know questions have been coming in, and uh, many of them have been answered. Um, well, I have two questions I would like to ask the presenters, uh, which will shed light to other questions that uh, perhaps have been answered. One, if Africa Geoporter is an open source mapping platform for Africa and users are constantly uploading data into this portal, what does Ezri intend to do with all that data on the African region alone? Perhaps maybe Gassan, would you like to shed light on this question, please? Well, uh, it, it's a tool to collaborate. So the more data it is, the better it is. People will have access to more data, things will move forward. But as we has the commitment to maintain uh, the access to this platform and to the data available on this platform. And uh, uh, there, is no, uh, uh, there is no conditions or restrictions. And the idea is, yes, we want the data to overflow the platform. We want data to be available. We want people to be able to access the data and we want to be able to increase collaborations and sharing across the continent. I hope this answers the, your question. Thank you. And uh, one more question for me. Does Ezri intend um, or plan to commercialize African Geoporter in the future? Not at all. This is a totally, uh, it is a full commitment uh, from Esri at no cost and there is no intentions to put any cost to it in the future. Okay, um, I think I see one hand uh, raised. Um, is she raising her hand? Annabelle. Okay, Johnny, let's have you. Can you unmute Johnny, please? Hello, Johnny, please, you can go on ahead and unmute yourself. Johnny, can you unmute yourself, please? Thank you. Okay, uh, if Johnny is not having difficulties, let's uh, check on Gideon. Gideon, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Hi. Hi, thank you. Uh, please, can you hear me? Yes, uh, yes. Hi, Gideon. Yeah, thank you. That has, that has been a very wonderful presentation and a good uh, initiative. But my question is that, uh, what about the data integrity? How do we ensure that? Uh, as, as my, co my, my, my colleague Pauline has showed you, uh, uh, Esri has uh, a long internal process to make sure that the data are, uh, once we create the data, not, sorry, not, not create, that's the wrong word. Once, once, we re when, once we look the data, there is an internal process to make sure that the data are authoritative and we sort of start scaling them. So the data that you will see appearing as soon as you do searches are the data that are more authoritative and the data that are uh, from uh, from uh, well-known sources. And of course, if, if any users upload data that are not authoritative or not uh, uh, validated, it, it will be in the platform, but it will not be elevated to the priorities and it will not be shown uh, 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 at the first search. So it's the same concept of, uh, of what we have in the uh, Living Atlas. Uh, it's really everything is, is, is cross-checked. 
and, and we have a team that works on it to make sure that the sources are reli reliable, confident, and authoritative. Um, but again, it is to increase the, the idea of the Africa Geoportal, it is to, to, to allow the communities to come together so any user part of that community will be able to share their data. It doesn't mean that their data are authoritative, but they will be able to share it with the community of Africa Geoportal. Okay, that's wonderful. How about I have just a suggestion. I think it's a very useful uh, platform, but one thing that must be, do must be done is education and awareness creation of, uh, uh, of our people. For yes. example, in a, I'm a lecturer in the university in Nigeria over here, and we've been taking uh, the booze by the home. And one thing we do is that awareness creation, even among the faculty members, you'll be surprised that even some lecturers don't know the efficacy and the potentials of geographic information systems and also our remote sensing. But what we do is that to create that awareness so that people will know that, oh, these are the potentials that they can really benefit from, even in their research work. And what one thing we still do is that even the students, we create the awareness, not only in engineering or in science, even in, 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 in uh, political, science, uh, political science and international relations, people will know that in my field, geographic information system is applicable. So when they are out, they will eventually be decision makers tomorrow. But yeah. because of the information that they have had, they will have it in mind that, okay, I've heard about this. Why can't we uh, apply this? And the test will be there. And if we are able to create more awareness, I believe uh, everyone will benefit from these uh, resources. That is normal. Thank you thank, very much. Thank you. Thank you, Gideon. You're raising a very important point, and, and this is something we are trying to, to, to work more on it in, in the continent and uh, also with our partners and, 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 and universities. So part of the Africa Geoporto, as we mentioned, we have the country pages. And, and the idea also behind the country pages is for each country to create uh, an environment where they will raise the awareness for their communities. Mm -hmm. So uh, as an example, uh, it, it, I'm, I'm just taking the example of Senegal because the country page of Senegal is there and, and the Côte d'Ivoire page. So what, 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 the author, what, what the partners and the authorities that are involved in that will start, for example, creating competitions with universities, doing story maps, bringing some stories and putting it up there and, 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 and sort of uh, raising, uh, uh, putting it up front in the local uh, uh, news, I don't want to say newspapers, but in the local news, uh, uh, show, sharing uh, uh, nice success stories, uh, nice stories, uh, raising awareness for the local communities. So this is the role of uh, 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 a country page. Uh, this is a role where we would like to, to play with most of the countries. So they will manage their own and it's the idea of, 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 of raising awareness so we can increase the communities of, of GIS and, and users across, uh, across the continent. So hopefully with the increasing number of, of country pages, of organization pages, people will go about this. But we also rely on people like you. We also rely on students, on universities come to us and go and promote it at the universities, do sessions at universities, invite us to come and to speak and to promote it. Because once you are at the universities, the student, the young generations, you are key for that. And we'll be happy to come and promote it, work with universities and even show it to your, uh, to your colleagues from different departments, uh, what they can do with GIS. And we are here with, with Sambos, with, with all the uh, GIS fans to help you. So uh, uh, feel free to reach out and, and we're happy to support. And, uh, and that's a great point. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, can we get say, that person who wants to ask another question? Just raise your hand and I'll call you. Okay, 
I don't think any more questions. So perhaps maybe we'll have to move to the next uh, seg segment. Now, moving over to the next part of our program, Esri has a tradition of rewarding exceptional talent from young professionals in GIS every year. Tag Esri Young Scholars Award. This year is no exception. This year was keenly contested. We finally got a winner, a final year undergraduate student of Remote Sensing and GIS Department of the Federal University of Technology, Akure Futa. He's a GIS developer with a solid foundation and lots of experience working with special and non-special data using various tools, technologies, and frameworks. Please join me in congratulating the awardee, Mr. Emmanuel Jolaya. His interest is in solving pressing environmental problems with data and technology at the core. He loves cycling, tennis, and hitting the gym. As I now invite Mr. Emmanuel Jalai to have a brief um, presentation as to how and what he did. <laughs> wow, thank you very much. Uh, I'm super excited and humbled to be here. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm super excited to be here. Um, I'd like to share my screen now. But I think you have to allow me to try and do that. Okay. All right. Can you see my screen, please? So I'll, I'll be presenting on the degradation of Adeji and Guru Westland, the causes and implications from a geospatial approach. Uh, once again, my name is Emmanuel Jalaya from the Department of Remote Sensing and GIS from Futa Akure um, here in Nigeria. So I'll be talking about briefly about the research, uh, what we did about the research in Adeji and Guru Westland and next steps, and I'll be concluding. So wetlands are nature's gifts. Uh, I call them they are wealth lands because they have a lot of resources, and particularly the Adijangu wetland in, in the north, northeastern uh, north region of the country has um, a lot of um, unique um, benefits for the environment in the community over there because they use it for a lot of agricultural uh, operations and because of the climatic factor in, in, the, in, in the northern region, they don't really have much rain. So they really depend on, on this wetland for irrigation, agricultural processes, and even farming, like fishing. So it's like the major driver of the northeastern economy of Nigeria, the Adeja wetland. And it's also a Ramsar site. So, and for it to be a Ramsar, uh, Ramsar site, that means it's, it has uh, international importance. But then this wetland is, is depleting, and that, that's what this story is all about. So this, this is the this is study ramp up of the wetland. It actually extends from Yobe, but this is like the central point of the, of the wetland. But it extends from Yobe to Jigawa. It's, it's really a, a big wetland. So the research, this is the methodology of the research. It's we used a couple data for the research, like the open landsat imageries spanning across four for epochs and we use the SRC and BEM. We did some PP analysis using ArcGIS 10.7 as ArcMap, image pre processing for atmospheric collection, a little of depth subtraction. And we also uh, viewed the BEM like, during the image processing stage. We did some flow map, uh, flow direction maps, flow lengths, and some ideological characteristics maps and we classified the study area for land use land program. Then we did some indices, NDWI and NDBI. All is, and the goal of all this and the objective is just to study the changes in the wetland for, from 1972 to, to 2018. So um, because it's a short presentation, I, I had to make an animation of the changes 
so we can all see how it's evolving at a glance. So, and the time frame is very, uh, very slow. So, this is 1987, this is the state of the wetland. It's kind of a consistent depletion. It's very slow, but it's steady, it's consistent. This is 1989 currently, it's still reducing. It's 1990. 1991. So if you notice, the wetland is reducing in extent. The blue regions are, are reducing, while vegetation and other land use activities are increasing. This is the 1995. This is 1996. Okay, 1997, wetland is kind of increased a bit. So this this study area, this wetland is kind of inconsistent because some some years it will increase, some years it will decrease. Like this 2000, it has reduced again. So 2001, it has reduced again. Reduction are not really significant to its best to like 2019. And that was very strange to see. It's like there's no more wetland in the, in the area. Yeah, starting from 26, 2007, it's shrinking, it's, it's reducing the. <laughs> it's like it's completely gone. In 2009, 2010. So you can see the wetland has completely gone. Starting from here, 2011, 2012, 2013. Yes, vegetation increased this year. And, and the last year, 2019. So this wetland is very inconsistent because there are a lot of factors causing this. The, the farmers there are overexploiting this wetland. They plant, they use the water for irrigation purposes. It's not really, it's not well taken care of. And that's why the wetland is just, it's just changing um, and having the consistent changes. So we did some land use, land cover maps to just study the change from 1972 to 2018. And this is the chart. As I, as I said earlier, it's very inconsistent. This is 1972, the wetland um, was quite high. It's before it's reduced again, and it's when it's reduced. Then 2000, it's increased again, uh, as we saw earlier. Then 2010, it's reduced, 2018, it's reduced again. So this wetland is very inconsistent. And this wouldn't be so for, for nature's um, gift. It's supposed, to, it's supposed to be a wetland that should at least maintain a consistent extent for a longer period of time. So these are some of the causes of, of depletion. This, from this picture, we can see that this is a fishing um, activity I'm going in the wetland. And this part of um, the reason why it's depleting. And even aside the extent of the depletion, it's also affecting some natural um, mammals like birds and fishes that um, live in the wetland. Encroachment due to overpopulation, dams and drainage construction, and over exploitation region, and intense agricultural activities. Because of the climate of the Delta region, the farmers around here depend on this wetland for, and even for feeding their, their stocks um, during dry seasons. So these are the next steps. There should be something like a GIS, uh, a GIS enabled tracker in the area to track the extent of the wetland. So, more so the sun can be made uh, immediately when they realize that the wetland is shrinking. And also, there should be like an enlightenment um, program for the farmers living in the area 
to stop exploiting the wetland. The wetland is shouldn't be exploited. Even if they'll be using the wetland for irrigation purposes, at least shouldn't be over exploited. And then, like I said, this research was carried out in 2018. So, um, planning of working on a recent um, study of the research area that will be publication world, like using the recent technologies in town, um, the good work engine and the GMAP Python package um, to reduce. Because this classification we did was unsupervised. So we're planning on using ML based classification um, for a very high accuracy and a very high resolution imagery as well. So we can get to actually get the actual extent area of, of the wetland. So perhaps the wetland is actually depleting or is inconsistent. So that will answer the question. So um, remote sensing has, has again proven its capability um, by revealing the data reduction of average angle wetland. But for remote sensing, you won't be able to study this wetland because it's a very far location from where from my school is. So thanks to remote sensing for satellite imagery data that enabled us to be able to carry out this research. So this results cause for urgent conservation efforts at restoring average angle wetland habitat for wetland animals and mammals, as well as human, which is um, responsible for the economy of Northeast Nigeria. So this is an excerpt from the um, poster paper, which uh, I've linked here. Uh, in the poster paper, there's more detailed uh, explanation of analysis and result and discussion of, of your um, study. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Emmanuel. We appreciate your presentation. Part of the award includes one year AGIS personal license and a space for six months paid internship with Sambos Joe Special starting for next year. Once again, Mr. July Emmanuel, congratulations. To learn more on how to qualify to be a winner in future events, Please visit our website, www.sambosjospecial.com. Like I said earlier on in the program, something new is coming from Sambos Joe Special, the launching of Joe World. Without any further ado, I will now call on Lois King Boso to talk to take us through this session. Thank you very much, Abel. Um, I'll be sharing my screen right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much once again. My name is Luis Kimboso. I'm with Sambo Geospatial. And um, I'll be taking you through uh, Africa, Sambo Geospatial uh, Limited GeoWorld Initiative. Uh, so let's jump into it. So GeoWorld is basically a CSR program that is um, developed by Sambo Geospatial Limited uh, to engage geospatial or GIS users within our region, especially students. Um, and then the main purpose is to drive the interest of people who are into geospatial technology and then increase the awareness of uh, the use of GIS tools within our region and also to help students be able to harness their GIS skills to develop them in order to be able to influence the group for the educational sector and the users in general. So the initiatives are actually divided into five different parts. We have the Learn GIS, we have GIS clubs, we have Geo Talks, we have um, Geo Hackathon, and then Geo Geekon. So Learn GIS, it's um, basically an initiative that involves uh, learning activities. So basically engaging students and people who are interested in using GIS tools 
to actually develop their skills. It's going to involve virtual internships. It's going to involve online learning. It's going to involve um, development of demos on issues that are going on within our environment. And we are going to also have a help desk that can engage students or people who have questions can be uh, sharing their, their, their concerns for us to be able to assist them through. Then we also have GIS clubs. So the GIS clubs will be formed in schools. So we're going to have it run through tertiary institutions, primary institutions, and secondary institutions. Um, the, they are going, we're going to have events that will be held in these schools. We're going to have regular meetings, and then Sambu's Jewish will also be supporting them with um, everything they need to uh, set this initiative going. So occasionally, we'll also be having some mentorship programs and sponsorship programs for students and uh, GIS events eventually. So basically, that's all about the GIS clubs. Then uh, geo talks. The geo talks are going to be regular or periodic talk sessions that we're going to be having in our schools. These sessions are supposed to cover the new update on geospatial or technical or technology. Sorry, let me take that again. Uh, they, are, they are supposed to cover updates on new geospatial technologies that are being released um, on a regular basis by our geospatial giants. And then we are also going to have just career discussions just to guide people on exactly what they want to or where they want to go into when it comes to handling GIS or when, when they want to when it comes to solving GIS problems uh, or uh, the industry that you want to apply it in. And this will also have some GIS demonstration whereby we have people creating solutions just to uh, present and see how best they can solve issues within our environment. Then a hackathon. Geo hackathon. So some loose geo hackathon is going to be an integrated or sorry, an integrated physical and online mapping activities organized for students. Um, yeah, the focus is going to be based on students which are in various universities. Uh, and we're going to have something like mapping competitions, which will be awarded uh, with prizes and uh, plaques and other forms of incentives to uh, encourage students to engage in mapping activities within their schools uh, and in their careers altogether. And finally, we have GeoGeekCon. The GeoGeekCon runs through the entire region. Uh, it's, gonna, it's also going to be a competition among institutions as well, but then this time around, it's not only going to involve the educational sector, but the entire GIS community altogether, whereby we're going to have the special enthusiasts, GIS professionals, experts, students, young learners, everybody coming on board to engage in activities, which uh, will also be prized or will be awarded. Um, during, during the competition. So uh, basically, this, uh, this is just a little introduction on all the activities or all the um, initiatives of GeoWorld. And um, all these activities will be rolled out in 2021. So we are hoping that uh, when we start it or when we initiate it, we will have everybody on board as we get time for people to actually engage themselves and practice and then learn more about their 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 geospatial field, okay? Get to develop and then get experiences that they can share within the geospatial community as they also work hard on developing them and then solving problems in the society. So um some of us will be communicating when it will be released or when we're gonna roll it out uh on our social media platforms and on our website. Everything will be will be relayed over there for to engage. So I will entreat everyone to follow us on our social media handles uh, on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and also uh, visit our website regularly to uh, follow up with this initiative. Thank you very much for listening and uh, have a wonderful event. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lois, for that wonderful presentation. We really thank the management of Sambos Geospecial for coming out with this initiative. 
I hope we all um, will take advantage of it. This is how we um, come to the end of today's section. I want to thank everyone for attending, especially for those who are our presenters from Esri, Gassan and Pauline, for taking out time off their busy schedule. Once again, congratulations, Mr. Emmanuel Julia, for emerging as the winner of this year's Esri Young Scholars Award. Thank you to Busso and to all of my colleagues working behind the scene. And many thanks to the management once again of Sambos for putting up this webinar as well as the Joe World Initiative. Come Friday 20th of November 2020, we will be having another session entitled Making a Difference in the Community Through the Advancement of GIS. For more information and inquiry, please visit our website, www.sambosjoespecial.com and all our social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for attending. From all of us here, I have been your host for today's session, Abel, signing out, and God bless.